The world that you and me are in is not the physical world. The world that you and me are in is a dream world. How close is it to the real world, though? Uh, we know that it's not very close, but we know that the dynamics of the dream world match the dynamics of the physical world to a certain degree of resolution. But right, the right. causal structure of the dream world is different. So you see, for instance, waves crashing on your feet, right? But there are no waves in the ocean. There's only water molecules that have tangents uh, between the molecules that are uh, uh, the result of electrons in the molecules interacting with each other. Isn't our dream world very consistent? That's my point. It's not an illusion. It's a form of data compression. It's an attempt to deal with the dynamics of too many parts to count at the level at which you are entangled with the best model that you can find. In the same way as you are modeling uh, the water molecules in the ocean that engulf your feet when you are walking on the beach as waves, and there are no waves, uh, but only the atoms and more complicated stuff underneath the atoms and so on. And you know that, right? you would accept, yes, uh, there is a certain abstraction that happens here. It's a simplification of what happens. And the simplification that is designed in such a way that your brain can deal with it temporarily and spatially in terms of resources and tuned for the predictive value. So you can predict with some accuracy whether your feet are going to get wet or not. But it's a really good appro- It's a really good interface and approximation. Basically, it's a machine learning model that is constantly tuned to minimize surprise. So it basically tries to predict as well as it can what you're going to perceive next. Which is the machine learning, our perception system or the dream world? Or the machine both? world, is, uh, dream world is the result of the machine learning process of the perceptual oh, system. That's doing the compression. Yes. And uh, the model of you as an agent is not a different type of model, or it's, it's a different type, but not uh, not different as in its model-like nature from the um, model of the ocean, right? Some things are oceans, some things are agents. And uh, one of these agents is using your own control model, the output of your model, the things that you perceive yourself as doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is you. But see, the word dream makes it seem like it's not real. No, of course it's not real. The, uh, the physical universe is real, but the physical universe is incomprehensible and it doesn't have any feeling of realness. The feeling of realness that you experience gets attached to certain representations where your brain assesses, this is the best model of reality that I have. So the only thing that's real to you is the thing that's happening at the very base of reality, like the, the Yeah, for something to be real, it needs to be implemented. So uh, the model that you have of reality is uh, real in as far as it is a model, right? It's an appropriate description of the world to say that there are models that are being experienced. Mm -hmm. But uh, the world that you experience is not necessarily implemented. There is a difference between a reality, a simulation, and a simulacrum. Mm -hmm. The um, reality that we are talking about is something that fully emerges over a causally closed lowest layer. And the idea of physicalism is that we are in that layer, that basically our world emerges over that. Every alternative to physicalism is a simulation theory, which basically says that we are in some kind of simulation universe and the real world needs to be an apparent universe of that, where the actual causal structure is, right? Mm -hmm. And when you look at the ocean in your own mind, you are looking at a simulation that explains what you're going to see next. So we are living in a simulation. Yes, but a simulation generated by our own brains. Yeah, And uh, this simulation is different from the physical reality because the causal structure that is being produced, what you are seeing, is different from the causal structure of physics. But consistent. Uh, hopefully. If not, then you are going to end up in some kind of institution where people will take care of you because your behavior will be inconsistent, right? Your uh, behavior needs to work in such a way that it's uh, interacting with a accurately predictive model of reality. And if your brain is unable to make your model of reality predictive, um, you will need help. So what uh, what do you think about Donald Hoffman's argument that it doesn't have to be consistent? I think he makes an evolutionary argument, which is like it, it could be an evolutionary advantage to have the dream world drift away from physical reality. I think that only works if you have tenure. As long as you're still interacting <laughs> with the ground truth, your internal model needs to be somewhat predictive. <laughs> <laughs> tenure. Well... In some sense, humans have achieved a kind of tenure in the animal kingdom. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and at some point we became too big to fail, so we became <laughs> postmodernist. <laughs> it all makes sense the now. The version of reality that we like. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, yeah, but 
basically you can do magic. You can change your assessment of reality, but eventually uh, reality is going to come bite you in the ass if it's not predictive.